That should not be oh, 36 seconds to go, but they said that. 59 R&D, and we have six team division contestants and four, um, no, six C and four team division contestants. And as in previous years, the speaker will get 10 minutes to present, and we'll have five minutes for questions from the judges, and if we still have time, we'll have question time from the audience. And uh, our first speaker tonight is, needs no introduction, Robert Alway. <laughs> Alrighty, well it's very sobering when you have your R&D report and a B division of the day before is, has something very much similar topic, so we'll get on with it. <laughs> Basically, um, the title is in Engine Mass and Total Impulse and Altitude Variation, and wanted to compare some uh, sources of variation in model rocket engine mass and their contribution to performance. Basically, you're going to have masses of engines, and some of it's going to be the paper tube, some of it's going to be the black powder inside. And so we're, I'm looking at it, combining model rocket component masses. So you've got basically component masses are going to be the paper tube. I didn't look at the, the clay nozzle and the black powder for thrust, uh, delay, and uh, ejection. And those internal portions is basically I'm relying on standard and testing and what they say is kind of a norm and then how those can vary. Then I went and weighed some of the paper tube and, and saw that variation and how that might compare with, with the black powder and, and the internal uh, variations in mass. Uh, so in combining those, those uh, masses and measurements I've made, uh, experiences in data as part of altitude competition. So I heard about this a few years back and okay let's start weighing engines and see what happens and I've flown that into a few competitions with weighed engines since then to see how that would work. And previously Peter and I as Bumbling Brothers um, uh, looked at some piston impulse changes and one of the things we did instead of just looking at altitude with the pistons was what that meant in terms of total impulse as your engine and we actually modeled instead of a C engine or a B engine a B.1 engine or a B.9 engine to see how those total impulses compared uh, and what they would model uh, electronically as altitudes. So I use cardboard components by that I mean things like the paper tubes, couplers, rather than actual engine tubes is, is uh, uh, surrogates for actual uh, engine cases. <coughs> so these are the reports I had looked at, of course ours, uh, where I looked at the differences in, in uh, uh, total impulse of engines to compare with altitude changes as a model for what our pistons were doing. Uh, Ryan Coleman did the things, why my heavier motors fly higher, he was attributing a lot of the change to increased uh, eje ejection delay times because many of the ejection delays were relatively short and this would give more coast time. And the other thing was Randy Bodeway had had a chance to see the Estes uh, model rocket engine production line and gave me some insights of the stepwise manner of addition of black powder to the engines rather than pouring it all in and compressing. Okay. Use digital scale, lots of model rockets and engines, old computer, uh, standard components, and peanut now micro peak altimeters, which were giving me altitudes on a lot of things. And there was facilities of NARM and other flying fields and associated equipment, including their altitude tracking. And the money spent on, the, on this project is really nebulous because a lot of it was spent for other contests and all the engines there, and not specifically set for this. So, you know, when you get down to it, the difference was printing paper and playing on a computer. Okay, so we got some data collected. These are the little teeny two inch BT5 paper couplers, a nice teeny print. I've got a poor man's graph on the side. Basically I have a series of masses uh, on the left and the number at each mass, so I have 87 uh, 0.87 grams, 0.8 grams, 0.9 going down, and then the number of tubes in each mass range. So you get a poor man's graph coming out to the side. And you can see that there's a center <coughs> peak and then it spreads out on either side. And I did not do statistical analysis of the curve, just sort of, okay, here's an eyeball, here's kind of a spread, just so you can get an idea of what's going on. 
And really the key thing is at the bottom where the high and low masses, so top and bottom there, and maybe I can use my pointer to do it, so we got a high mass and a low mass. So that difference between those is about uh, 3% from the, the middle. And here was a set from T23 inch couplers, and all of these came from BMS, by the way, Balsam Machining Service. And an interesting thing happened here, you can see this big gap I left, and there's a grouping here, and another grouping at a higher mass. And I went through afterwards and thought, okay, I'm going to look and see if I can see any small difference. And there was a small difference at the end of the tubes. It was like one had been inked on or something, and the other set had not. And so I separated them that way, and it turned out it went into these two groups. So I'm suspecting they were different batches of tubes, so that you get sort of variations within and then a major variation between uh, groups of the tubing. This is not surprising. Uh, I'm going to go back and relying on my own personal experiences. If you've ever seen paper manufacturing, it's a massive process. They make a big slurry of pulp, and that pulp can be recycled material or it can be new material. The brown paper they use in this is generally recycled paper, and depending on the facility you go to, it may be one big batch, or they may have different streams coming in, and then they um, mesh up with those. And when they order tubes, especially brown tubes, it's like, okay, I want something within certain criteria, and they will make it, and they will make a batch of them with whatever they have on hand. And within that batch, they're going to be very similar because the production runs up, flows smoothly, it's all fluid being processed, and they drain the water, even though there's particles in it. So that batch will come out very, very uh, repeatable as far as paper is concerned. Okay, so now we have some motor mount tubes. This was a nice set of them, very narrowly put together. Uh, motor mount tubes that are the glass covered ones, the two and three quarter inch long little standard tubes. And uh, again, these were manufactured at a manufacturer who automatically cut and put them out. Okay, so here are some half A34T engine masses. And starting at, I did these in groupings of a tenth of a gram. And the average mass I had is 6.57 grams, so I kind of narrowed it down to hundreds. And in pretty wide range, uh, 4 to 7 percent from average, depending if you went up and down. And I have all the numbers with zeros except at this high end. And I don't have a record of that. These were ones I measured for competition, skimmed off the top ones, and flew those for competition. So those are gone, and I don't have that data. Um, <laughs> Uh, but as evidence of, of how well they worked, this was half a altitude at NARAM 55. And my first flight was 222 meters, which had me just barely in second place over a tie for third place at 220 meters, using a piston and a real good model. And my second flight was 275 meters. And I looked this at this as a, a grand measure because I actually beat trip in this, which is nearly impossible. And you notice I have my, my little asterisk of the trip barber gravity well effect. And what happened was, is when I had that prepped, trip comes out, looks at my disaster of wares on my tower, and meets them all up so they're all perfect and the things go. So I, I attribute a good part of that extra altitude to just him magically, you know, messing with my model. But the, the point being, it was one of the engines that was at that high end and beyond the variation that you would expect from the wind <coughs> the And again, we had some other ones, and I strongly suspect neutron fusion uh, kind of was on the same thing as picking out those, those heavier motors. And again, this was one of my 7.x plus engines. It was above seven grams somewhere. Okay, for this NARAM, I did a lot of weighing of C67 engines, similar sort of thing grouping in the middle, and a couple of them up here. And I actually reserved these engines for this NARAM. And I did come in fourth place uh, at sea altitude this time, and considering that I used a shorter piston than I normally would like, but I'm busy being contest director, I figure that, that did indeed sort of confirm that that at least didn't hurt things. Two minutes left, Bob. Okie dokie. So anyway, and oops. <coughs> Sometime back, we also had, I think it was two years ago, 
we had um, predicted altitude. And there was a case where I looked down a list of B66 engines, pulled them from the same batch, so I figured their, their casings were coming from the same batch, and um, weighed those and found two engines that were exactly identical down to the hundredth of a gram. And they came within, uh, they were both 153 meters. They were about two feet apart in altitude that bracketed 153 meters. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a weighing where, uh, and it was the ident exact identical school rocket that I used in both flights. Results and conclusion, then you can do something with it. Um, there is a variation and only if you go to extremes, I think, does it make a difference. I didn't show Ryan Coleman's, but when he used middling weights, the variation in the paper was probably as big a contribution as any difference in, in, the, in the internal uh, propellant. <clears throat> so, and I should add that part of the, the thing with the propellant is when you get to those extreme ones where it's quite a notch, the propellant goes in batch-wise rather than a flow like the paper does. So it will be a step-wise kind of a quantum jump to that additional mass or at the low end, less mass. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. You're going to get variation. There's about, in a number of these, as much mass of paper as the, is propellant. Uh, so those can be an equal balance of those contributions. And if you get an extreme, then maybe it might be both or it might be one or the other, but probably it's both. And both means you've got extra propellant. So that, uh, I will leave it at that, and since I'm just about out of time anyway. Yes, you know that well. Thank you. Do um, you know if there are tables published of masses of, of motors or typical masses, like your graphs? Is that all uh, the different types of motors? The, there isn't like a graph chart that I've seen. Now, standards and testing as a wrote down but didn't have a chance to get into, it does have a sort of a standard they go through and test and here's, here's what the mass of the, the overall engine is. And in one of the cases, I think it was a C67, all the ones that I happened to purchase the, this year were, uh, or most of them were, I don't know, on the order of a half a gram heavier than that. And it could be that systematically mm -hmm. the, the paper casings that were purchased were heavier or it could be systematically at Estes Industries that particular batch they set and they were getting that much extra propellant. So do you recommend that um, flyers that want to get um, good performance weigh the engines and then take the heaviest engine? I would recommend that, yeah. And if you are looking for a predicted altitude or a set one, then I would go to the middle of the table, pull them from the same batch so that your paper tubing is going to be in that narrower range of variability and then you're more likely to have a very narrow range of propellant. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, pass. Did answered you, every, you, you, you answered every question I, I, was, I was all set to ask. <laughs> you <pretty laughs> so, Did you attempt to get unloaded engine tubes from Estes? No, I did not. Uh, for, the, for the guilty reason, I went through about two different R&D possible reports before this, and they were dying like flies, and so this came up. <coughs> later <laughs> and I didn't have time to ask. Questions from the audience. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, you're the contest director for NARAM 59? Yeah. And you entered R&D? Yeah. And you entered a bunch of other competitions? Yeah. Well, what are you thinking? <laughs> he wants to kick your butt. What can I say? <laughs> he likes to fly rockets. Awesome, man. No, I, I, I couldn't do that. I was the contest well, director I for Aaron do it 21, and I couldn't compete in anything. Best wishes. Anyone else have a question, comment? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.